The Detroit Tigers are spiraling. That's four straight losses. The offense is nowhere to be found. And some big picture questions are starting to get asked. Let's talk about it all today on Locked On Tigers. You are Locked On Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Thursday, June 20th, 2024. Thank you so much for making Locked On Tigers your first listen. Every single day, we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Tax Network USA. Did you know that it's never too late to resolve your tax issues with the IRS? Well, don't wait. Reduce your tax debt and get help from a team of licensed tax professionals. Call 1-800-549-1000 or visit tnusa.com slash locked on. Happy Thursday to all. Welcome in. The Tigers have an off day today as you are listening to this, but on yesterday, on yesterday, but yesterday, the Tigers lost 7 to nothing to the Atlanta Braves. 7 to nothing. They are now 34 and 40 on the season, 6 games under 500. They're 7 games out of the wild card for those who were really excited that they were within a couple of games just a short week and a half ago. They are on a 4 game losing streak and they are 3 and 10. In the team's last 13 ball games, we're not going to wait around here. Let's just get right into it. What went wrong in this seven to nothing loss to the Atlanta Braves, finishing off a sweep in Atlanta or getting swept in Atlanta, finishing off a sweep for the Braves in Atlanta? The offense has now, in the last six games, this has been the offense's run production. 0 13 1 1 1 0 that is the last 6 games of Detroit Tigers offense that's 3 runs total in 5 of your last 6 ball games the 13 runs clearly an outlier but everyone kind of knew that while it was happening too And look, Ronaldo Lopez has had a phenomenal season. He only went five innings in this one. He's had a great year. He has reinvented his repertoire a little bit, really not afraid to attack fastballs inside and outside to both righties and lefties. Uh, Is throwing his changeup again, didn't for a while. Has had a a really nice bounce back kind of rejuvenation of his career. Moving back into a starting role. In Atlanta. He's been phenomenal. This was not the best version of Ronaldo Lopez. It it really wasn't. There were a lot of balls over the heart of the plate. And one thing that I found amusing on the broadcast in this ballgame was very early on, Benetti and Petrie were talking about how first pitch strike percentage for pitchers is the highest that it has been in a very, very long time. And it's amusing to me that while more strikes are being thrown on the first pitch than we have seen in ages, the Detroit Tigers' offensive philosophy is to swing the least amount in all of baseball on first pitches. Is that not absolutely mind-boggling to anybody else? The highest first pitch strike percentage we have seen in the league in years and years and years. And the Detroit Tigers sit comfortably in 30th in first first pitch strike percentage. Comfortably. They're over a percent below 29th. That just blew my mind. The approach, I I don't know what the approach is. 
I, I had this conversation with with someone recently. I, I can't remember who, so I apologize if it's you. But I, I had this conversation recently with someone online, and, and it, it, it genuinely, like, it's not like their their chase rate is really good, and it's like, oh, they don't swing, but they never expand the strike zone. Like, no, it's it's a middle of the pack chase rate. It, it, it feels like they just. On certain counts, it's just like, oh, like you never swing when it's uh whatever, whatever count. That's what it feels like a lot of the time. Predetermined stuff, which is just brutal. Shut out yet again, just completely uncompetitive at bats a lot of the time from this lineup. Speak of the lineup, look at look at this lineup on Wednesday. Besides Riley Green, look at this lineup card. There is not a single fan base in the game of baseball that would look at this lineup card and believe that this was a competitive baseball team. Not one. Not one. Colt Keith is a 582 OPS and was the two hitter in this ball game. I, it's it's mind boggling to me. Genuinely, top to bottom, I'm I'm not, I'm going to spare everyone, and we're not going to play the OPS game right now for the sake of all of our mental health. But but goodness, Winsiel Perez, Colt Keith, Riley Green, Mark Canna, Gio Rochella. That's your top five. If you would have told me that that was this team's top, you can just go one through nine. I mean, Zach McKinstry was the six hitter. He has a sub 500 OPS. You can just do the, the entire lineup. If you would have told me this was the lineup going into the season, I would have put my hands in my face and gone, oh my goodness, what went wrong? What happened? 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position in this ballgame. Speaking of Zach McKinstry, he goes 0 for 4 with two strikeouts. He has a 174 average and a 496 OPS on the season. I was really blown away by the... Lack of shortstop production on yesterday's show, right? And, and was joking about, oh, like how difficult is it to to find a really even halfway decent hitting shortstop? This is where the Detroit Tigers shortstop production ranks in the year 2024. Okay, so just not just like Javi or just Javi and McKinstry, literally every single at-bat that has been recorded by the person playing shortstop in that game for the Detroit Tigers, okay? In Fangraph's war, they are 30th by almost an entire win. 29th in baseball is a tie between the Marlins and Athletics at negative 0.3. Okay, now Tim Anderson almost has a negative one war, but they have a couple other guys who have positive war, so it's evened out to them, not evened out, but the 29th, okay, negative 0.3. The Detroit Tigers from shortstop this year are 30th with negative 1.2 F4 out of shortstop. It is June 20th. They have comfortably more than one win lost just out of shortstop. WRC plus weighted runs created plus okay 100 means that they are league average hitters in the eyes of this statistic okay and it's just a scale 29th the Oakland A's have gotten a 54 WRC plus from their shortstop position this season they're 29th almost 50 percent worse than league average the Detroit Tigers is 30 can you can we comprehend that 30 WRC plus from the shortstop position. An OPS, for those who, who aren't fans of WRC plus or whatnot, if that's a new stat to you, 463 OPS from the shortstop position. That's also, shockingly, 30th. And the 29th is the A's at 511. 
it, it's it, it's just absolutely unbelievable to me. And that's one position. Maybe we'll just take a day and just go through every single position. Like half the lineup had OPSs in the six and five hundreds in this game. And that's why you've scored three runs in five of your last six. Okay. Let's keep the ball rolling. We got to talk about Tarek Skubal, who did not have a great day at the office either. We will talk about all of that right after this. Got to talk to you all today about our friends over at Tax Network USA. Here on Locked on Tigers, we pride ourselves in getting you the latest news for your team, whether it's the offseason, the draft, spring training, or the playoffs. It's year-round. And you know what else is year-round? Collection season. Just because tax season is over doesn't mean the IRS will stop coming after your unfiled taxes. The IRS can garnish your wages, levy your bank accounts, and seize your property. Don't let the IRS target you. Let the licensed professionals add tax experts at Tax Network USA go to bat for you. With over 14 years of experience and an A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau, Tax Network USA has saved their clients over $1 billion in tax debt. Whether you owe taxes, have complicated matters that require tax planning, or finally hit that parlay this season and need help correctly filing, call 1-800-549-1000 or visit tnusa.com slash locked on. See the link in this episode description below. Also got to talk to you all about our friends over at Policy Genius. Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace, and it makes choosing the right policy for your family easy and quick. With Policy Genius, you can find your insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options are 100% online and let you avoid unnecessary medical exams as well. Policy Genius helps you compare your options from America's top insurers in just a few clicks. They have award-winning agents that can walk you through the process step-by-step, step, and they have no incentive to recommend one insurer over another, so you can trust their guidance fully. They have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot from customers who found the best fit for their needs. So get peace of mind by finding the right life insurance with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Segment two of Locked on Tigers. Appreciate y'all for tuning in as always, making us your first listen every day. Shout out to the everydayers that do tune in every day. We will, of course, be back tomorrow with an off day episode. Got a few things that I want to discuss on tomorrow's show. A little bit of big picture stuff, immediate stuff. Might have somebody on to still game planning that, but we will be back, no less. Also, be sure to check out Locked on Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel. Program for you every day that brings you the biggest stories without all the screaming that maybe Fox Sports or ESPN give you on a daily basis. Aside from me when I get mad, sometimes I guess I still yell too. But it's streaming 24-7 on YouTube or for free in the Amazon Fire TV channels app. Talking about what went right and what went wrong, focusing on the uh, category of things that went wrong in this 7 to nothing loss. A much longer list than uh, the side of... Things that went right in this one, unfortunately. Talked a lot about the offense in segment one. Let's talk Tarek Skubal. Four innings, seven hits, five runs. Four of them earned two walks, seven strikeouts, and two home runs against. Uh, this one really wasn't rocket science uh, as, as far as you know why he struggled. He had no command, uh, especially early in the outing. The first couple of innings really was spraying the ball all over the place. Everything was riding up, right? All the fastballs he threw early. He was missing really high. That's why he kept hitting people. He was throwing the ball at, at, at players' eyes, right? Like eye-level stuff way, way up. And then with uh, with his changeup, it got absolutely punished multiple times in this game. And the reason why is because he was aiming low and it rode up. I mean, that that's really, again, that, that's all there is to it. I don't have too much else to say. I'm not worried about Tarek Skubal long-term. Uh, still has really good stuff. When the command is right, we see the stretches he goes on. This is back-to-back -back outings that haven't been great for him, but he is still one of the best pitchers in baseball and still is one of the favorites to win the American League Cy Young. It's going to take a lot more 
for me to be like legitimately concerned about him, especially because this wasn't like, oh, the stuff was terrible or anything like that. Like this was, this was again, very clearly everything he threw was just up in the zone. I, I don't know if the, the stride, like his extension was different. That, that can be something that really messes with a uh, vertical elevation, I, I guess on, uh, on pitches that can be something also just release point. Maybe his release point was just kind of, you know, whack and, and haywire in this game. I'm not sure. Uh, but at, at the end of the day, this is still the best player on the team. And uh, I'm not going to, like, talk about him being a terrible pitcher or anything after two starts. Next outing, I believe, is – I guess I can look it up really quickly. I believe is the Phillies. So – not like his next outing is going to be, oh, this is a really easy opportunity to get back on track, right? He, he's not pitching this weekend against the White Sox, um, so we'll certainly still have a test. But, uh, yeah, this outing, again, was just really poor changeup and fastball command. And those are the two pitches that are kind of his bread and butter and why he's so successful. So when he doesn't have command of them, this kind of stuff happens. Mason Ingler, not a very good outing as well. Uh, we'll talk about him a little bit later in stuff. Let's talk about what went right, because that's a pretty short list. Andy Abanez made a great play defensively. Thought he made a great play and was at the very first inning over at first base. Um, yeah, he, he's a gamer. Had a couple of hits in this one as well. Had a pretty good day all around at the plate and in the field. And I, I just, I really like Andy Abanez a lot. Uh, fits his role on the team exceptionally well. And I think, I don't know, I, I, I was thinking the other day that maybe, like, does he have a trade market? I don't know. If he does, it's not like you're going to get anything legitimate for him. I'm, I'm not saying you're going to get some game-changing piece, but I don't know. Lefty specialists can play a lot of positions. I don't know. I don't know. Just a thought. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a second, too. But I, I really, really do like Andy Ibanez a lot. Winsiel Perez had a good day at the office, too. Had a couple of really nice plays out in the outfield as well as some good at bats. I thought that, I mean, he was the only person that was really sizing up and taking it to Ronaldo Lopez, which is always uh, a good sign against one of the better pitchers in baseball so far this season. Uh, the reason why he hit so high in the lineup, I think was because he hits the changeup really well. And that is uh, what reared its head in this game. Got at least one hit off of that uh, Lopez changeup. So yeah, good good to see him get back over that 700 mark, which is very arbitrary, but it's at least you know optically pleasing for whatever that's worth to you. And that's pretty much it. That's the extent of what went right in this ballgame. That's it. I guess Joey Wentz didn't give up a run. Good for him. That's pretty much it. Stuff. Uh, like I said yesterday, on uh, to plug yesterday's show, there's nothing you can do to fix this overnight. There, there is nothing you can do to right this ship and, and turn this offense around like right now, right? There's almost no point in trying to fix this, quote unquote. Like that, that is that is out the window. This offense is not good. It's not going to be good. That That's just, it is what it is, right? That being said, there are also several players on this team who I think are very quickly playing themselves off of this roster, and there's some names in the minors that I think are close to returning to at least get more of a look on them. Now, Spencer Torgelson has been struggling mightily down in Toledo over the last week, week and a half after his first, whatever, I want to say five or six games, he was swinging a hot stick there. That has cooled off very much. He had an off day on Wednesday. He did not play for the Mudhens, so that shows you how that's going. Um, but I, I think Ryan Kreidler, uh, I mean, maybe still Joey Wentz to an extent, but I think being a lefty might, again, kind of kind of help him stay on the roster and being able to go multiple innings and just the, I don't know, relief pitching, the shallowness that you have right now as is. You can't just send down everybody, I, I guess. Um, but I, I think Kreidler, Wentz a little bit, mostly Mason Englert, uh, Akil Badu, I think as well, are all kind of players that are in the mix where over the next couple of weeks, especially when Javi is back and healthy again, you could see go back down to Toledo. Mason Engler just unfortunately is not a major league pitcher right now. And that was the case last season as well. And we've talked about it a lot. Just doesn't have a major league fastball at the moment. And that's something that he needs to continue 
to work on if he wants to make an argument to make his way back. But for right now, I, I think his time with the Tigers is probably coming to an end here relatively soon. And then Badu is on here. A, he doesn't have very good numbers. He hasn't hit very well since rejoining the team. But also Parker Meadows has been hitting well. And I think that they uh, there's a lot of rumblings. Evan Petzold has been all over it, kind of rumblings of uh, a Parker Meadows return maybe looming. So I, I think that that is probably something that is, if it doesn't happen, you know, this weekend maybe happens again in the next week or two. But I do think getting Parker Meadows back up here, giving him another shot, I mean, why not? Why not? That, you know, if, if we're playing this, if we're going to lose and, and we're playing this game of like who is a part of the, the future core and who isn't, Parker Meadows at least has a better chance of being somewhat of a piece going forward to this team than a lot of other players on the roster. So you might as well give him another look. Okay, I want to talk a little bit big picture, trade deadline kind of stuff, all right? And then uh, we'll preview the weekend. We'll do all of that right after this. Got to talk to you all today about our friends over at Stitch Fix. You know that instant confidence boost you get from an outfit that makes you look really good? That's what I get with Stitch Fix. With Stitch Fix, you can get a stylist who understands your style, size, and budget, and they do all the shopping for you. It's the easiest way to upgrade your wardrobe this season. Easily upgrade your wardrobe this year with a professional stylist that helps you find new and on-trend favorites that will work just for you. I just give my stylist my size, style, and budget preferences, order boxes, when I want and how I want, and no subscription is required. They send five just-for-me pieces plus outfit recommendations and pro styling advice. I keep what works, and I send back the rest. My stylist always sends just right pieces, and the fit is on point. They truly do know what they're talking about. I don't know how they do it, but they just get me and what I'm looking for. So style that makes you feel as good as you look is right around the corner at Stitch Fix. Now's the best time to get started on stitchfix.com slash MLB to get $100 off. That's 25 off your first four fixes for a limited time only. That's stitchfix.com slash MLB for $100 off. Stitchfix.com slash MLB must redeem within seven days of signup. Offer does not include kid fixes. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Third and final segment of Locked on Tigers. Appreciate you all for tuning in as always. So we're talking stuff now. We, we're, I'm done talking about this ball game. Uh, it, it was not good. There's honestly how we even got two segments out of it is either nothing short of a miracle or just my ability to ramble and gap. Um, zooming out a little bit, you know, one of the questions – that I had while watching this game was if this team completely collapses, right? I'm talking like turns into one of the bottom feeders in baseball over the next month and a half from now until the trade deadline. If they just completely fall apart, which again, look at the lineup card on Wednesday and tell me that's not very possible. Okay, so if that does happen, will they be even harder sellers than we maybe originally thought? Is there something to be said for how competitive they play in the next five weeks, or is it a foregone conclusion? That's a question I have for the class. Because... I feel like if they really do completely crash and burn, you zoom out and look at the big picture and you go, how many core pieces are ready right now? And if that answer is concerningly low, I, I don't want to put this out into the world and I, I, I don't do this to, to be like a Debbie Downer. But if you're awful from now until the deadline and you do just decide to completely blow it up 
then you're talking about rebuild 2.0. And that's that's a that's a question. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I don't know. My question to you is if the team is terrible in that time frame, does that become more and more of a reality? And, and so many people are talking about Tarek Skubal, right? Like Jack Flaherty, I think is a foregone conclusion. That dude's getting traded at the deadline, right? And then you have like some small pieces. I just kind of riffed about Andy Abanez. Uh, he's not going to have a big trade market. Uh, you probably won't get much of anything for him. Gio Urshela, similar camp, right? You have plenty of those type of players throughout your roster. You have a guy like Jason Foley. When was the last time he even pitched? My goodness. Right? You got guys in your pen that haven't been great, but they're certainly still somewhat of a market for. Tarek Skubal, to me, and again, we'll we'll talk about this way more in depth. We'll have whole episodes dedicated to the prospect of trading Tarek Skubal and what it could or could not mean for the organization. But I think that's the 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 test. That's the beacon. Right. If you're wondering what does this front office think about the Detroit Tigers, look at what they do with Tarek Skubal and the trade deadline. That's your answer. If they trade Skubal, it's because they think they are still years away. And they want to get as young as they possibly can, replenish the farm system even more, et cetera, et cetera. Trade one of your best players to get young, controllable assets, all of that. If they hold on to him, that may mean, not guaranteed, we'll see what happens in winter meetings and, and stuff as well. Trades can obviously happen in the offseason too. But that might be an indication that they think they can roll out a much more competitive team in the next year or two. But that's really where my head is at with the with the Scooble conversation. I, I think that is a, a complete testament to how close this front office thinks the Detroit Tigers are to competing. And the trade track record for the guy who's going to be trading Scooble so far as president of baseball ops for the Detroit Tigers has not been stellar. Man, what an absolute implosion. There's a lot of optimism going into this season. Remember? And I think now, again, like I, I urge you to just go through the Major League roster right now. Just the people that are healthy, that are on the roster, pitching and hitting. And you highlight or circle or write down whatever. Who's a long-term piece to this puzzle? And if it's not a very big list, then maybe in your brain too, they're not as close as we once thought. You got a series against the White Sox this weekend. Got a chance to bounce back because the White Sox are awful. Okay. They are really, really bad. They are one of the worst teams we've seen in recent memory. Beat the Chicago White Sox. Beat them. I think the only thing you can really do is, is sweep them to get people back even remotely on board. And even if you do that, people are going to be like, all right, it's the White Sox. Let's see what we do against the Phillies right after, right? It, it, it's like the opposite of extra credit on a test. If you sweep them, great. It's what you should have done and what you're supposed to do. If you don't, how could you? <laughs> we'll preview that a little bit more in depth on tomorrow's show. Again, may maybe I'm being overly dramatic. It's a four-game losing streak, but they've been really bad for most of June. They're completely sliding. May, I don't know. Maybe you're listening to this and you're going, wow, we're talking about like big picture failures because of a 13 game sample size. That's ridiculous. They were 500. That, that is, that is, you know, fair and, and completely your right to view this team however you want. Uh, I'm just, uh, again, I, I wasn't trying to necessarily, 
I was trying to to think out loud, really, more than anything, and and ask questions to everybody else on on your opinions on the matter, more than saying like this is definitely happening or not happening, etc. Either way, things are looking mighty bleak at the present moment. I want to end the show with a quote, and the quote is about the great Willie Mays that passed earlier this week. We spent a little bit of time on yesterday's show, mourning the loss of the all-time great. Again, truly one of the greatest, in some people's eyes, just straight up the greatest baseball player to ever live. And this is one of my favorite quotes about Willie Mays, about the Say Hey Kid. Uh, this is from Leo DeRocher. Okay. Quote, if somebody came up and hit 450, stole 100 bases, and performed a miracle in the field every day, I'd look you right in the eye and tell you Willie Mays was better. Rest in peace to the Say Hey Kid. Thanks for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every single day. Shout out to the everydayers that do tune in every day, and we will be back tomorrow. All right. Peace and love. Going to therapy's dope. I'll catch y'all then, baby. Go Tigers.